Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Savar Shetty and I am a second year postgraduate resident in the Department of Radiology of uh, KS Agri Medical Academy, Mangalore. My topic for Sonobus 2024 paper presentation is the comparison of bone tumors on radiography and MRI with histopathology. So, coming to the background, either soft tissue inside the bones or aberrant growth of bone-like tissue can result in bone tumors. Primary and secondary tumors are divided into benign and malignant categories. There are two age ranges in which malignant bone lesions can occur, that is, the range of 10 to 20 years of age and 40 to 80 years of age. Additionally, there is a gender preference for them. Males are more likely than females to experience them by about 1.5%. Information from patient's medical history, that is, age, gender, malignancies, pain history, injuries, lesion examination, radiographic examination of the margins, degree of cortical expansion, periosteal reaction, and prior imaging are all considered in the diagnostic evaluation of focal bone lesions. Hematological malignancies and metastatic cancers like carcinoma cast a larger shadow than primary bone tumors. Now MRI will aid in separating benign from malignant bone lesions. Aims to emphasize the value of MRI and plain radiography while maintaining histopathology as the gold standard for the diagnosis of bone tumors and to improve treatment outcomes with regards to accurate and rapid diagnosis. Introduction When it comes to small lesions, magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI is useful because these lesions can be detected on diffusion weighted imaging that is the DWI sequence. Uh, where the diffusion restriction is more indicative of malignancy. The diagnosis of bone tumors is greatly aided by conventional radiography. X-rays are specifically used in imaging diagnostic procedures. The best method for local staging is thought to be MRI. Age, tumor location, pattern of destruction or the margins, aggressiveness, growth rate, matrix formation, periosteal reaction, cortical involvement, size, number, and appearance on MR imaging are necessary for an accurate diagnosis. Benign tumors are frequently seen in clinical practice and have a variety of shared physical characteristics. In order to avoid making a mistaken diagnosis, it's crucial for our clinicians to assess the patient's presentation, symptoms, and radiographic appearance. Coming to the materials and methods. Now, retrospectively, MRI and radiographs of patients who underwent imaging at the Department of Radiology at KSIT Medical Academy, Mangalore, were used and they were obtained using standard imaging protocols with Philips 1.5 Tesla MRI between the dates of January 2021 and September 2023. The inclusion criteria of the study were patients of all ages with mass lesions planned for an MRI scan. The exclusion criteria of the study are patients with a history of surgeries or known for any other malignancies or people who are already undergoing chemotherapy. X-ray radiographs were taken um, with at least two projections that was anterior posterior and lateral rows. Once the imaging was completed, X-ray findings were interpreted and looked for the presence or absence of a bony lesion. Now X-ray findings were then compared with MRI findings. Coming to the observation and results, 64 participants were enrolled in the study. Their mean age was 54 years. There was a minimum age of 14 years and a maximum age of 81 years. Of the 64 participants, 34 of them were males that accounted to about 53.12% and the rest 30 were females, so about 46.8%. Now, primary symptoms. Of the 64 patients, 43 of them complained of pain that accounted to about 67%. 27 of them complained about swelling of joints that attributed to 42%. 20 of them complained about weight loss that was 31.2%. And 24 of them complained about restricted movement that was again about 37%. In addition to the primary symptoms, the location of the lesion was also considered. So MRI revealed that the location of the lesion 22 of them had bone lesions in the diaphysis, that was 34%, uh, and about 16 of them had it in the metaphysis, that is 
seven of them had it in the meta diaphysis and 19 of them in the meta epiphyseal region so that attributed to about 10.9 and 29.6 percent respectively also the type of lesion was also described uh, out of the 64 people examined on x-ray 38 of them had lytic lesions 21 of them were sclerotic and five of them were metastatic uh, when it was finally sent to histopathology 56 of them were found to be malignant bone tumors and eight of them were found to be benign now coming to some images now we can see an altered signal density region in the lateral aspect of the distal metadiaphyseal region of the right femur with some cortical disruption so you can see both the axial and the coronal images of the femur uh, now based on the periosteal reaction the soft tissue component the soft tissue involvement and the cortical disruption this was a case of osteosarcoma which was confirmed on MRI and eventually histopathological examination this is basically a series of uh, first two x-rays that was in the uh, AP and lateral view followed by MRI in uh, SAG and axial and coronal sections as well so this was basically an altered signal intensity lesion in the proximal epimetaphyseal region of the right tibia with some cortical disruption interrupted periosteal reaction and a soft tissue component now these features were again of an uh, osteosarcoma now the patient first came with the swelling at the knee joint an x-ray was taken so the x-ray was the first step which helped us pick up that there was something sinister that was going on in this knee joint so based on that an MRI was done and our final diagnosis was confirmed on histopathology so this is just one example that by histopath and MRI and radiography go hand in hand now coming to the discussion part the gold standard for diagnosis in our study was histopathology and we assessed the diagnostic accuracy of MRI and X-rays for bone tumors using histology as the gold standard we discovered that MRI and X-ray have very good bone tumor diagnostic precision and malignant bone tumors primarily affect the spine and the long bones the purpose of the study was to emphasize the value of MRI and plain radiography in the diagnosis of bone tumors the diagnosis of any bone neoplasm might be limited by several factors including lesions in the complex anatomy, evaluation of the bone marrow and soft tissue resolution, all of which are important for staging. While both have a high diagnostic accuracy, MRI is more accurate in assessing soft tissues and estimating the growing area of tumors. MRI and X-rays have almost equal diagnostic accuracy, though X-ray imaging, osteoporosis, periosteal reaction, sclerotization of the lesions, calcification and ossification of the bone can be evaluated. Non-invasive imaging techniques such as MRIs and X-rays are dependable and very accurate in diagnosing bone tumors. In order to rule out malignancy and minimize errors and the necessity for fine needle aspiration, cytology or biopsy with high diagnostic accuracy, measures such as division restriction, local invasion, soft tissue characterization, perilesion alterations and X-ray evaluation of bone and soft tissue calcifications are used. These are the references. Thank you.